Hello, my name is Kudzai Mubaiwa and I'm co-founder of Eyes on Hub, which is an incubation space that is based in Harare in Zimbabwe, which is in Southern Africa. So the work that we do is we've been around since 2015. We initially started off as a space that would run pre-incubation programs that were supposed to just support youth. Over time, as we were running our programs, we realized that we would have probably less women than men who were coming for the programs. And even when they did, they would not participate as much. Um, sometimes they wouldn't be able to come through for, you know, the incubation program meetups because they, as women, they had a whole lot of things running. But many times it would be domestic issues that they had to take care of, so they had very little time. Or perhaps uh, it was a childcare issue, they could not find someone to be able to leave the child with. And you know, the prospect of bringing them was pretty difficult because it would be a learning environment. And that then informed us to try out what we are now working on in 2019, you know, after several iterations and trials and several cycles, because we've had really a cycle of incubators every year since we started. From 2019, uh, earlier this year, we then started up what we now call our Female Founders Program. And under the Female Founders Program, we still run with the theme of Eyes on Hub, which is enterprise development in the digital age. What we seek to do is to be able to teach the innovators, the makers, the entrepreneurs, the small business owners that we are working with around two important things. The first is to find a business model that works for any kind of ent enterprise in any kind of sector. It could be manufacturing, it could be services, it could be ICT related. But what we want them to understand is that they should come up with a working business model. So we take them through the basics of moving from an idea and then testing a concept, finding a minimum viable product, and then hopefully being able to scale that. And what is important in that first phase is to make sure that they understand and make sure that they have a secure and workable business model. But you'll also take note that as part of our payoff line, which is enterprise development in the digital age, there is yet another very important aspect, which is the digital aspect. It is our firm belief that there is the opportunity that comes to anybody who is working and running an enterprise in the digital age. So we realize that in Zimbabwe, we do have some of the preconditions that are necessary. The first is the fact that in our 14 or 15 million plus population, most of us have the ability to read and write. So Zimbabwe does have a reasonably good literacy rate. It has always been above 90%, always in the top five. You go to any rural area in Zimbabwe or any urban area, though most of us are in rural areas, most people are able to read and write in English. Most people are able to read and write in uh, whatever the local language may be, depending on what space or place you're in, they can be able to use any one of the 16 languages to read and write. But yet again, another opportunity is the specifically digital one, where we are saying that for most people, as we speak right now, they've had access to a mobile phone in some way. It may not necessarily be a smartphone, but you will realize that the numbers do show that many Zimbabweans um, you know, do own a SIM card, do own some kind of a phone, or have access to one. And that tells us that we can be able to reach a lot of people who, like I said before, are able to read and write. So devices themselves could be a way of communicating specific information, could be a way of training people even from a remote uh, place. Uh, recently, statistics were shared that show that, you know, mobile, uh, and rather internet penetration in Zimbabwe is just over 60%. And while that, not, that might not be 100%, that is a really good figure um, from a Zimbabwean perspective, even in African context, it's amongst probably some of the higher ones. And that shows you also that there's opportunity there because more and more people have access to the internet. In fact, it's actually quite interesting that in Zimbabwe, over 99% of people who have access to the internet use mobile devices. And if I combine all of those preconditions, that leaves us in a space where we are saying it is very feasible to build any kind of enterprise with a thought that says I can be able to then leverage or make use of the opportunity of the internet. It could be in communicating the product or service you're selling, uh, or alternatively in advertising it, or learning about it, or teaching other people about it, because there is some form of access. Another interesting bit of information to consider is the fact that at the moment, Zimbabwe does not have what we'd call an official currency. We are in a multi-currency uh, situation where what we use, which is closest to local currency, is what is called the RTGS dollar, formerly called the bond note. But that's not really, you know, a formal currency as it were. And so you recognize that many of us use our mobile phones for transactions. 
And because of that, that means anybody can be able to literally close a transaction or close a deal or close a sale by advertising things that they're selling, products or services using the internet, mostly things like WhatsApp, because for many of us, you know, WhatsApp is the internet. Uh, there's greater access or easy access to that by using bundles or perhaps through Facebook. And then you can be able to advertise. Someone sees your product, reaches out to you, and you can be able to deliver that product to them and be paid using mobile money. And so our thought pattern is then to say, we can be able to help female founders, you know, women, whether they are young or old, in whatever location, be able to learn around the basics of business, be able to then, you know, find out how they can actually advertise their businesses using digital means, and just be able to be empowered, uh, have the ability to run something that belongs to them and receive money into their own wallets because they own a mobile device and can be able to transact in that way. Because once you have a phone number, you are as good as having a bank account and you can be able to transact in any way. You can buy, you can sell things, you can pay for electricity, you can pay for insurance, you can pay for funeral cover. You can basically just pay for everything using a mobile wallet. And so for us at Eyes on Hub, the thought pattern is then to say, we can be able in this digital age to use the two key things, financial literacy and digital literacy as tools for empowering women, young and old, female, women who are in places where they're urban or they could be rural or it could be peri-urban. Some of the things that we found as a, you know, a problem in the past, poverty, as far as I understand it, can also be defined as having lack of access. But in the digital age, we are saying that once a woman has hold of a digital device of any sort and they have an idea in their head, then there is a place and there is a way for us to be able to link with them, share the information they require, get them to work with us through a program, even remotely, and then, you know, be able to build up an enterprise which they can receive payment for into their own phones. And so for us, the agenda that we want to push is economic development. The agenda that we want to push is to make sure that women are financially literate and financially secure. The agenda that we want to push is that women also have an understanding of how they can use the opportunity of the internet to be empowered individuals. And so that's the program that we are looking to do. We are in test phase right now. We are going through our first cycle. We do have meetups uh, in the capital city in Harare, but we also have some virtual attendees who are tuning in from the different provinces. We have 10 provinces in the country, so from the nine other provinces, we do have some people here and there who are tuning in and working the journey for, with us. And our hope for the future, in terms of how we see it, is we would love to have these meetups being held offline in places across the country. It could be in a home, it could be in a rural area at a gathering place, like even a boho or you know, a women's club or a church or a school or a vocational training center, any place where people are able to organize themselves and meet up, even if there's only one device amongst a number of them, that can be a way of us pushing information to them. And so what we do as a hub really, and our ultimate vision really is to help entrepreneurs and small business owners and innovators and creatives and makers, anyone who wants to make a life for themselves and strengthen themselves economically, get the tools that they require. We don't have to be physically present in the place where they are, but we can send out information. Because we realize that the key things that many of them who would have flourished lack is access to information, is linkages to funding, is linkages to markets. And all of these things are things that we can correct and be able to address using the opportunity of the internet. And so at Eyes on Hub, this is the journey that we've embarked upon, and this is what we hope to do and to be in the future. So Eyes on Hub can be found on uh, the usual social media channels. We do have a website, www.eyesonhub.org.zw. We are also on Twitter, at Eyes on Hub, and we are also present on Facebook, at Eyes on Hub. You can email us on our email, which is eyesonhubzim, which is I-Z-O-N-E-H-U-B-Z-I-M, at gmail.com, or you can reach out via WhatsApp or Telegram on plus two six three seven seven two five two six five four three and we can be able to connect and see how you can be able to partner with us the things that we believe would require i believe in the medium to uh, short medium and even into the long term as support from partners would be some of the devices that can help us to uh, you know which we can distribute to some of our point people we would want to plant in the provinces so that there is a physical presence and once we get those devices, those can be gathering points. So 
any kind of an easy to use device with decent battery power that can be able to hold or host some video content which can be able to connect to uh, you know the internet would be brilliant so we're looking at basic entry level smartphones you're looking at basic entry level mobile devices like tablets those would be very very useful in uh, in the path that we're going and of course any bit of funding really that can help the people that would be reaching out to easily be able to access Wi-Fi or buy or pay for uh, data would make a great difference. We realize that those are the most important tools for us, just that hardware and the access and the opportunity to get to the internet. And then, of course, you know, a small funds that can allow people when they meet together to have refreshments or to be able to transport themselves from places that are out there towards what may be a gathering point. With just those, those, those few things and, of course, the resources of human uh, resources, hands that are just willing to work with us, or teach our people, that would be a very welcome resource as well. People who have content that they can teach around business skills or you know digital skills that would really do well for women, that would make a great difference in our programming. Thank you and we look forward to hearing from you.